Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to learn about building one octave major scales on the ladder of fourths using our old friend the tetrachord. You probably remember using tetrachords back in an earlier lesson when we explored the ladder of fifths. Well, today it's time to discover new kinds of patterns on the ladder of fourths. Let's come to the piano to get started. First, a real quick review of half steps and whole steps. Can you point to a half step above this key? If you're pointing here, you're correct. Remember, a half step is the distance such that there's no key in between, white or black. But this, on the other hand, is a whole step because there is a key in between. One half step plus another half step equals a whole step. A quick way to determine a whole step is there will always be exactly one key, black or white, in between. Here's a whole step, and here's a whole step, because we've got that one key in between. Now you may recall that a major tetrachord is built on two whole steps. You can see a whole step here, one key in between, another whole step here, one key in between, and then a half step at the end. So together that's whole, whole, half. And that's the formula, if you will, or the ingredients of a major tetrachord. Now let's try building an E major tetrachord. Point to a whole step above this E. If you're pointing here, you're correct. Remember, we have to skip over one key, white or black. Now point to another whole step above this F sharp. That should be right here. Another whole step would bring us to G sharp. Now that's a whole whole we need to finish with a half. Point to where we would finish with a half step. Should be pointing right here. Now we have a whole whole half. That makes an E major tetrachord. Let's use some sign language today to help us remember that pattern of whole and half steps. So we're gonna use W for whole. Can you make this W sign with me? This is the sign for W, and it's whole, whole, and then half. This is, the, this is sign language for the letter H. Try this with me, just two fingers pointing to the side. So try this together, whole, whole, half. Good. Now let's see if you can figure out this one on your own. I've given you the first note. This will be F or DO. See if you can figure out the notes of the F major tetrachord. I'll give you a few seconds to figure it out, and then the correct answer will appear. This is the correct answer for the F major tetrachord. We have a whole step, whole step, half step. Let's try one more. Can you figure out the E flat major tetrachord? Use the formula whole, whole, half to figure it out. The correct answer will appear in a few seconds. Here's an E flat major tetrachord, whole step, whole step, finishing with the half step. Now let's come back to C major for a second. Here's our C major tetrachord. You'll recall that to build a one octave major scale, we put two major tetrachords together, joined by one whole step in the middle. Here's the C major tetrachord. Here's the G major tetrachord. They're one whole step apart. You put this together, and we call this the C major one octave scale. Now in a previous lesson, we found that when we took our starting note and moved it up a fifth, every time we went up a fifth, we found we had to add one sharp. A fifth above C is G, and G major has one sharp. When we went up another fifth to D major, we found we had two sharps, etc. Well, today we're going to explore what happens when we go up by fourths. What is a fourth above C? Well, we count one, two, three, four, a fourth above C is F. So let's build our F major tetrachord. We have a whole step, whole step, half step, and that gives us our first tetrachord. Then we start our next tetrachord a whole step above that for whole step, whole step, whole step, and then we finish with a half step. So this would be our F major one octave scale. Let's sing this in solfege together. Go. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Now let's sing that in letter names. Go. F, G, A, B flat, 
Whoops, knock that guy off. B flat, C, D, E, F. Now you notice this time, instead of sharps, we ended up with a flat. And why did we call this a B flat? Well, it's because we altered this B to the left. If we had taken this note and moved it here, then we would have called it A sharp. But it was the B that was altered down a half step to create this half step between me and fa, which is why we call it a B flat. So we see that when we go from C up a fourth, it added one flat. Let's draw this on our ladder of fourths. Every major scale we discover today, we're going to be filling out on this ladder of fourths, which I encourage you to download from our website so you can fill out your own copy too. That will be a great thing to have for reference as we're learning more repertoire going forward. So, just like we had in the ladder of fifths, at the bottom of our ladder of fourths, we have C major with zero flats. C major has zero flats, zero sharps. So it's the bottom of our ladder. Then if we go up a fourth, we get to F major, we just discovered, which has B flat. One flat. And to draw that key signature, we put a little flat symbol there on our B line, which is line three of the treble staff. So go ahead and take a moment to fill this out on your ladder of fourths. Press pause if you need to do that. And otherwise, let's keep going. Now let's go up another fourth on the ladder. So we were on F. What's a fourth above F? One, two, three, it's not B because B was flatted. So the fourth above F, technically speaking, is B flat. That's called a perfect fourth, Do to Fa. So now we're going to need a tetrachord starting on B flat. And for convenience, so we don't end up going too high, let's actually use this B flat as our starting note. Now, press pause and see if you can figure out the major tetrachord for B flat. Remember our pattern, whole, whole, half. Press pause, try and cover that up with your fingers and then press play to go on. Here's the correct answer. We need to go up a whole step, up another whole step. Remember, every whole step skips one key, black or white, and then we finish with a half step. So this is the B flat major tetrachord. Then going up from there, we start our next tetrachord a whole step up, then another whole step, then another whole step, and we finish with this half step here. So let's look at the whole step, half step pattern for the, the entire scale. We have whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So two holes, then a half, then three holes, because we've got this joiner hole, plus two more for this tetrachord, three holes, finishing with a half. Now let's try our sign language again for the entire one octave major scale. We have whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Try that with me. So there's two holes, whole, whole, half, and then three holes in a row, whole, 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 half. Good, now put it all together, go. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. When you're driving around in the car, that's something you can practice. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So you'll notice for the key of B flat major, we still have our B flat. It looks like there are three flats now, but there aren't really because this B flat just duplicates this B flat. Our new flat will be E flat. So this key going up one fourth from F had two flats, B flat and our new flat of E flat. Let's draw that, whoops, <laughs> let's draw that on the ladder of fourths. Now let's draw what we discovered for the key of B flat major. When we go up a fourth from F, we get to B flat, and we found that in that key, we have two flats now. We have a B flat and an E flat. Go ahead and fill this out on your ladder of fourths as well. And to draw our key signature, we always keep our flats in the same order that they appear on the ladder. So we have our B flat and then E flat, it's tradition to put up here on this top space of the treble staff. And that gives us two flats 
for the key of B flat major. Now let's try to play the B flat major scale using our tetrachord finger position. Remember we'll use four fingers for the left hand, five, four, three, two. Your thumb can just kind of take a break and your right hand will be two, three, four, five on the other tetrachord. So here's one major tetrachord on B flat, C, D, E flat. Get your left hand in that position, then right hand will take F, G, A, B flat. Cover up this position and let's play the scale, singing the letter names. Go. B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. Now sing it in solfege, starting at the bottom again. Go. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. So in this position, we can play any of our old Tetra scale songs like we learned um, follow, 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 follow me. Let's make a line for all to see. Or chumbara, 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 chum, 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 chum. Or you can also do joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Okay, any of those songs fit in this one octave scale. And as we learn more keys today, you'll be able to play all of these keys using those songs. Now, let's come up another fourth on the ladder. B flat was our starting note. What's another fourth up from B flat? One, two, three, four brings us to E flat. So now with E flat as our starting note, let's pause the video and see if you can figure out the tetrachord, the E major tetrachord, uh, the first four notes of the scale. Try to figure that out, then press play to go on. Here's our E flat major tetrachord. Whole step, whole step, half step. Now let's keep building from there. We need to add another whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Makes our one octave scale. Now you'll see we still have a B flat. That was our first flat to show up on the ladder. We still have E flat, which is duplicated in two places. And then our new flat is what? If you said A flat, you're correct. So our flats are now B flat, E flat, and A flat. Let's draw that on the ladder. Now let's add E flat major to our ladder of fourths. So go ahead and do this yourself on your own ladder. So the flats we discovered were B flat, and we still have an E flat. And what was the new flat? If you said A flat, you're correct. That gives us three flats. Let's try drawing the key signature. We'll need our B flat, our E flat, and then our A flat. And the order, it's customary in music to always put them in this order. That's the order they appear on the ladder. Now, take a moment and fill this out on your ladder of fourths. Press pause if you need a few extra moments to do that. Now, when we play this, notice that we kind of have this pattern of black, white, white, black for this tetrachord, and then that pattern repeats, black, white, white, black. Kind of makes a pattern. See how that goes? Go ahead and cover up the E flat major one octave scale. Remember, it's gonna go black, white, white, black, then black, white, white, black. Now, let's try to say the letter names as we play, slowly starting at the bottom. Go. E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat. Now in solfege. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Great job. Now let's notice a pattern here that's starting to emerge. Our new flat became the next key. Let's see if that pattern holds here. Our new flat in B flat major was E flat, and that became our next key. Now, if that pattern continues, then A flat should be our next key. So let's come to the piano keys and see if that pattern holds. 
Now, what is a fourth above E flat? One, two, three, four. We see that brings us to A flat. So let's go ahead and start here. And now that you see how this pattern works, now that you see that every time we go up a fourth, we're adding a flat, let's see if you can figure out the rest of the ladder of fourths on your own. Take some time to figure it out. Remember this pattern of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Using that pattern, you should be able to figure out the rest. Now, let me warn you that some tricky things are going to happen. Eventually, you're going to get to a point where you're going to need, let's see, both a C flat, which enharmonically is B, but we'll call it a C flat, and an F flat. In order to get all the way to the top of the ladder, I'm giving you a hint that you'll need to use a C flat and an F flat. The reason we wouldn't just call it a B is because B already is claimed by this B flat. And we have to use all of the letters one time, which is why when you get to this note, you'll have to call it a C flat. So that's my hint to you. Press pause and see how far up the ladder you can get. The way you'll test your answers is you'll play the scale. Hope I didn't give anything away there. <laughs> Play the scale and see if it sounds like a major scale. If it sounds like... You'll listen and be like, oh, that didn't sound like a major scale. So use your ear and test your answer. See if it sounds truly like a major scale. And then write down what you discover on the ladder of fourths. Then after you press pause and try that, press play and I'll show you the correct answers. Here's what you should have figured out for your ladder of fourths. So why don't you pause the video and check what I have written here and compare it to what you did on your ladder of fourths. Take a moment to correct anything that you need to correct and then press play and we'll discuss. For A flat major, you should have had four flats. And we again see that this pattern continues, that the new flat becomes the next key. And then the new flat, and the, the reason for that really is because the new flat is always a fourth above the key that you're in. And because we're on the ladder of fourths, that gives us the next fourth up. So the new flat was D flat, and a fourth up again on the ladder brings us to D flat. The new flat here is G flat, which brings us to five flats. And then G flat becomes the next key up. Our new flat here is C flat. And then up another fourth gets us to C flat major, where now all possible keys are flat. Now, as we've mentioned, it's customary to always keep these flats in this particular order. It's the order that they appeared from the bottom, B, E, A, D, G, C, F. So it happens that the first four spell the word bead. That can be kind of a trick to remember the order, bead, G, C, F. Another trick you can use to remember this order, which you'll always use whenever you draw a key signature, is the saying, battle ends and down goes Charles' father. You'll remember from the latter of fifths, the saying, father Charles goes down and ends battle. Well, that sentence is useful because in flats, the order is the exact opposite. Battle ends and down goes Charles' father. So you can use that sentence as a little trick, a memory tool to help remember this order of flats. Now let's look at how to play all of these upper flat keys. Here's our A flat major scale. Can you cover up this position? We have a black, black, white, black, black, white, white, black. Covering up this position, let's sing the letter names. Go. A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat. A flat major, key with four flats. Now let's come up a fourth, one, two, three, four. So now D flat's our starting note. Now we should have five flats. Remember, it might look like six flats because this D flat is duplicated but our flats are now D flat, E flat, F, 
G flat, A flat, B flat, C, D flat. Okay, now let's come up another fourth. One, two, three, four. Brings us to G flat major. I'm going to drop it down to here. And now you should have black, 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 white. There's whole, 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 sorry, two holes, half, then whole, 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 half. The first note is really just our starting note. Okay, cover up this position and let's name the letters. G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat. There's that C flat we were talking about. D flat, E flat, F, G flat. Everything was flat except this F. Now let's come up another fourth. One, two, three, four. That brings us to C flat. Now let's see what happens. We need a whole step, two whole steps, then a half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So now here's our position. So naming the notes, we get C flat, D flat, E flat, F flat, G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat. Every single key is flat now. Try saying that with me. Go. C flat, D flat, E flat, F flat, G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat. Amazing, huh? Now, for your practice this week, I'd like you to take all of these keys on the ladder of fourths and practice playing them while you sing the solfege. Then practice it again singing the letter names A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat. And then try playing one of those three songs I mentioned that you can use in the one octave scale. Joy to the world or chumbara, chumbara. Or follow, 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 follow me. Try every key on the ladder of fourths using one of those songs and get comfortable with all of these major scales. And congratulations that now with the ladder of fifths and the ladder of fourths, you now know all 12 possible major keys that exist in music. Great job learning all about building major scales on the ladder of fourths. Thanks for watching and happy practicing. Hey, Mr. Hoffman, great lesson on the ladder of fourths today. Why, thank you, Scuba. But, you know, I was wondering, why does the ladder have to stop at C flat major? What if you went up another fourth? That won't work. You'll go off the ladder. C flat major already has all seven flats. You can't get any more than that, can you? Well, in theory, you could go up another fourth and keep adding flats to the key signature, but you're going to have to start using double flats. Double really? flats? Please show us this awesomeness. Okay, let's check it out on the piano keys. So, if we go up another fourth from C flat, one, two, three, four, that brings us to F flat. So, let's try and figure out the major scale for F flat major. We'll need F flat, G flat, A flat. Then, to make the half step, we'll need a B double flat. What? That just looks like an A. You're right, princess. B double flat is enharmonic with A. But the rules of music theory and building major scales are that we can only use each letter in the musical alphabet once. We've already used A for this A flat. So we have to call this B double flat. We've gone down two half steps. Well, okay. Then going on up from there, we need C flat, D flat, E flat, finishing with F flat. And that makes the F flat major scale with a total of six regular flats plus one double flat. But that just looks the same as the E major scale. That's right. It does look exactly the same because E and F flat are enharmonic. They're just different names for the same thing. So, show us the key signature. Okay, the key signature for F flat major would look like this. Awesome! That's crazy cool looking. Seems kind of pointless to me when you could just as well use E major instead. Come on, princess. Have a little appreciation for the science of music theory. 
Now, I want to figure out more keys with double flats. I'm going to keep climbing up the ladder of fourths. I wonder if I'll ever get to triple flats, quadruple flats. Huh. You got to love scuba. Bye.